Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, very straightforward, we're gonna get my Ruger Mini 14 ready for some use with optics. There is a Picatinny rail that comes with this as a factory standard Picatinny rail. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna get it mounted up. I have a couple of different sort of options for optics. I'm gonna take a look at that. Now this also does come with scope rings, but I really don't wanna use the factory scope rings simply from the standpoint that to me, it's gonna leave me a little bit, and I would say lacking for what I want to do ultimately with my rifle and with my optics. I kind of need some interchangeability because, you know, being a reviewer, I have different things that I need to test and try. So when I set up a rifle, it's usually not one and done. Sometimes that might be the case, but that's certainly not the case today. So getting it set up with the factory pick rail, I'm gonna start to understand how much rail do I have, what set points do I have available to me, and what optics work or don't work. So today is a little bit of an experiment and just a way to get things moving with optics on my Ruger Mini 14. And so again, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get this set up with some optics. I'm gonna take it out to the range. I'm gonna give it a try, get my overall impressions, make sure that the actual casings are ejecting properly and everything is functioning to my needs. And so with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. So as we get into the mounting of this pick rail for my Mini 14. Now there are a ton of aftermarket options out there. I am simply starting with the factory kit. So this does come with the rifle. Uh, you can see here it comes with the pick rail itself, some screws, and then some blue Loctite. Now what I am going to say is I do try to pay fairly close attention to torque. You can see here I do have my torque wrench. This is something where in the past I've kind of bit myself in a couple of different areas where when I don't properly torque down on mounting screws for optics, the optics can wander, they can move in and out, and you can even cause damage to the optics. And I've kind of done all of this uh, at this point in my firearms career. So getting a little bit of torque on here is going to matter. The blue Loctite is going to matter but unfortunately what i can't find and i do also need to say ruger generally does a real good job with their owner's manuals if you have you know questions about what to do or how to you know approach different sort of tasks and typically i would say torque values a lot of times the actual user's manual from ruger pretty good there's always you know fairly reasonable detailed information in their users manuals i think they do a fantastic job overall and there's a lot of really useful and important information in here and unlike other manufacturers where you simply can't find their information so from that perspective i do really appreciate ruger but unfortunately in this case i just can't find a torque value that i need for these screws. So we're gonna go, I guess what I would say is firm on the uh, finger tight, and then I'll figure out kind of where I'm at and snug them up a little bit beyond that. And then with the blue Loctite, I'll probably be in good shape. And there literally should be nothing tricky about this job. It should be very straightforward in terms of, you know, the operation and what I need to do, uh, the parts and pieces that are needed and the actual screws and tools that are needed for this job. So all in all, it should be pretty straightforward. The rail here being a 1913 rail, you'll notice that there is a cutout on one side. Uh, that goes towards the ejection port so that your casings can properly eject. Uh, you'll notice too that because of the shape of the rifle, that does really come into play. So you end up with a single screw in the front, double in the back, and then the cutout for your ejection port. So mounting this does really only go one direction. Now just one thing worth mentioning, if you're interested, these here, these are the Benchmaster X block shooting rests, but I am leveraging these for a simple bench rest while I work on my equipment here. You can see these are very effective, very sturdy and a nice platform. So a little bit of dual purpose. I did cover these in a shooting review in a prior video if you're curious. So take a look back. These are very useful, very lightweight, easily stored. 
just a nice piece of kit. And right now it's really gonna help me just holding everything in place. So as we get into this again, just getting this rail mounted on top, taking a quick look at how everything's going to fit. So should be pretty straightforward. I do still seemingly have a nice line of sight through my original sights, which I think is going to work out well for me. So if I'm careful with the right optic, with the right mounting solution, I might still get access to my iron sights, but we'll figure that out kind of after the fact. Something else worth noting, the rifle does come with these little plugs, as you can see here, tiny, tiny little plugs. Those could be used to fill these, you know, screw holes here when you're not using an optic or when you're not using the plate. Now I'm not gonna need those, so those will get set aside and stored for future use. At this point, this does come with the screws that you need to mount this. You'll notice that it is a hex head, so just paying close attention to the actual size of the head, which at least for me, seemingly the H2, or in other words, two millimeter head, does seem to work for these just fine. So nice and snug fit. I have no concerns that this would potentially strip out. A very simple yet nice little feature on this standard rail here. You can see that this has a little bit of a key on the back. So it's stepped up, which is going to be nice. That's gonna help it index just very positively into the top of the receiver. So if you look at the top of the receiver, there's actually a keyway and that's going to be nice. This is really gonna help it to stay firm, not move around, and that should aid in overall accuracy and just this plate staying perfectly where I need it. Now, one thing to consider, this is now at this point going to cover the top of the receiver, which would really reduce my ability to kind of maintain in here and get in and clean and, you know, the different things that come with obstructions. There is something to be said for how open and clean and easy it is to get in here right now for basic maintenance. This is going to sort of clog that up a little bit. But with that, of course, I'm gonna continue to roll on. I am going to put just a little bit of lube underneath these areas just for corrosion resistance. So in the areas you know, where it's going to be mated up because I won't be able to clean that moving forward i won't be able to get in there and you know get all the you know sort of moisture off of this so to prevent it in the first place in my opinion is worth it so just a little light coat of oil here and then i'll mount up the plate which i don't think it really matters what you use and even at that you know i'm gonna wipe off a vast majority of this and it's again only in the areas where this is going to be seated up against the receiver. Just a little bit of corrosion resistance. And same on this side, just trying to be careful. I really don't want to get too much of this down and inside the threads because obviously that's going to be where the Loctite goes, but that's just going to help protect everything and wiping off the excess. And that should do it. So a uh, little steps here, you know, not necessary. I like to kind of go the extra mile sometimes on this stuff, uh, but you certainly don't have to. Now that is ready to go. Again, they give you basically blue Loctite. I have my own, so I'm not gonna open you know, another little container of it. So we're just gonna leave that as it is, but it certainly doesn't need much and I can start to get everything into place. I do like the fact that these screws have the black oxide finish on them. It kind of leaves everything in a nice dark and sort of matte finish so that it blends. It looks really good, ties everything together. This would be just, you know, dumb if it was bright stainless. So I like the fact that everything kind of matches. And at this point, everything is literally finger tight. So now that it's finger tight, I can start to go with my torque wrench and get a feel for this. So I don't think it's gonna need much. I'm gonna go very, very easy and just really keep it simple. Like I should not need any more than 10 inch pounds. That's probably more than enough, but let's just feel it out here. That right there is five, six. So I'm just gonna keep it even from front to back. So everything torques up nice and even across the top of the receiver. Again, that right there is 10. So 10 doesn't feel like quite enough to me. Yep, that's 10 and it's still moving on me. So I'm gonna go a little bit more, bringing this up to 15, which again, still being careful and cautious, 
just gonna feel this out. It's still moving. I don't think I would really need to do any more than that. That's 12. That's 15. I think I'm gonna call it at 15. I really don't wanna go any more than that and I feel like that should suffice. There we go. So I'm at 15 across the top. All even, nicely torqued, in very good shape. You know, I feel like this is at least trending in the right direction. So, in reality, I can't shoot until that blue Loctite sets up, which is fine. I'm not planning on going to the range today anyway, but I can continue moving forward with getting things mounted. Here, as we get into this, I have a number of different optics opportunities depending on what I'm trying to do. So, the first one I'm going to break out here is actually a fairly simple and straightforward scope, uh, kind of like that military style short scope, not a lot to it. Pretty easy, all things considered. Now, as I get this on here, I can see a couple of things that just have me wondering right away. Now I feel like I can mount the optic fairly well. That shouldn't be a problem. Tightening down on the screws. Luckily I have the knobs on the appropriate side and I did have to change the side of the knobs for another firearm. And you can see if the knobs were on this side, it might be in the way of the ejection port, which I already do need to sort of question this. I kind of wonder is that going to be in the way? I think it is. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. So that might cause a malfunction. That would be very interesting to test. I probably will test that. I'm kind of curious. So that will be something that I do test in my field testing when I get out to the range. And so these are the knobs I'm talking about here. You can see that would be in the way of the ejection port. So depending on what you're trying to do, you know, that might be an issue. So you need to pay attention to your mounts, how they're configured and what kind of conflicts it may create. And of course, as you look at this a little bit closer, there's no way to slide this even further forward. Now, again, keep in mind, there are many other aftermarket sort of options for longer rails and different configurations, which would impact this in a different way. But this is very much limited. I might be able to scoot this forward just a tiny bit, but that definitely does nothing to aid in the overall clearance. Now, in terms of my eye relief, as I get on this, it seems like I need to move this back. So that is definitely going to be a significant consideration. So this definitely needs to move pretty far back which at this point is a little bit better, but I still get some shadows if I'm not careful. So taking a look at the bright white wall, yeah. So I mean, it's not perfect. This definitely would get me by. It's not ideal, but it would work. So is this perfect? No, but trending in the right direction. Now, if we take a look at more of a standard size scope, and as I go to mount this, you'll notice that I actually have my rings pretty close to what would work, but not quite. This ends up spaced out just a little bit too wide, and this is fairly standard for my other rifles. So unfortunately, I'm just like a tick off in my adjustment. Honestly, that might be the difference between a 1913 pick rail and Weaver. I'm not too sure um, the spacing that that really could be the impact here. So all I would really need to do is just tighten up on this just a little bit, get these rings squashed in just a little bit more, and that would probably fit on there just fine. And just pulling out another option here, you can see I'm gonna bump into the same exact problem. So unfortunately, this rail is just a little bit tight compared to 
what I've been using in the past. If it was literally one more notch forward, I'd be in better shape. So I'm gonna forego the standard scopes for now and continue to move forward. And so here I have a basic red dot reflex sight mounted on a riser. This can go in a number of locations. This to me is gonna start to work and be a little bit better, but you'll see right away, this is actually not going to grab onto too much, really only the forward section, because that cutout leaves it lacking. So at this point, there's really nothing on the back side for it to grab onto. Now, is that gonna be a problem? I doubt it, it would probably be fine. When I move more towards the rear, a little more meat there, so that works well. So that should be just fine. But then the problem is I get a little corner of my mount overhanging into the clearance of the cutout. So will that be a problem? Hard to say. So I'm gonna get this tightened up and this will be an interesting experiment. I can certainly run this in two different locations. So we're gonna take a look at that in both scenarios, which I'm hoping this is gonna work out okay. I mean, I have it at this point mounted on the front of the rifle as I get this up and into place. In terms of the optic placement and my ability to see, I mean, that's almost perfect. I mean, I'm mounting the weapon right away. I mean, that dot is literally directly in front of my vision. There's literally no missing it. So in terms of you know my sight picture and the dot acquisition, target acquisition, that's gonna be just fine. So the only wild card here at this point is what actually does happen with the rounds? Can they properly eject? So we will test that. In terms of my ability to see, no, I cannot get on my iron sights. So that's a little bit of a deficiency there. Not a huge deal and there's not much I can do about that. But in terms of the placement of the red dot itself, that's gonna be just fine. So we'll test this in the field and see how it goes. Another consideration worth mentioning, as I was tightening this down, I realized that the rear screw and, and bolt as I was tightening it down was kind of feeling a little bit, and I'm gonna say mushy. It wasn't as firm, which means in other words, it wasn't clamping down with quite the same force as the front. So when I went to take it off, it was still a little bit loose. So I am concerned that through use, this could loosen up when I mount it on the front. That might mean I need to mount it more towards the rear, which at that point would impact my sight picture. But again, that will come with the experimentation at the range. So now to mount this primary arms SLX onto the Ruger Mini 14. The first thing, because it has that proprietary rail, you are gonna see that the mount itself gets into the cutout for that relief. So you'll notice here that the ejection port relief has this cutout here, no rail through that section. And so unfortunately, you know, this is going to be a little bit in conflict. But you'll see here on this particular optic, that there are these little notches. That's gonna help everything index. However, as I take a look here, it is it is actually going to catch. So it is catching one of the rail sections through here. Now, of course, again, this is right through that cutout. So this will kind of impact the overall uh, capabilities and functionality for this to potentially eject properly. The other thing that is going to be impacted is as I tighten down this particular mount, it's not gonna squash down through the front section. So right now, you know, that's a little bit of a liability where if I have this as far back as it can go, that's not gonna be very happy tightening down. So what I really need to do is kind of span the opening, which again is going to be even maybe further suspect. Who knows? I mean, maybe that'll improve the potential for it to eject. I'm curious how this is going to go. I, I can't see this working at all to positively eject the rounds all the way out of the firearm. I just, I can't see it because otherwise, I mean, this is pretty much bridging the gap. If this is bridging the gap, 
then why can't this have bridged the gap in the first place? So I don't really know how this is going to work. And as I take a look at this in the spacing, I mean, the best I can do is probably about here. And at least at this point, this is tightening down on the rail, both on the front and on the rear. I might be better off and there's not much I can do because of the spacing of the actual bolts itself. So that's about as good as I can do for this particular optic. As I'm tightening down on the screws, it does feel like everything's tightening up nicely. I'm not gonna really crush it or kill it. And at this point, at least this seems to be mounted good and firm. Flipping up the caps here, general eye relief. This is way off because I need to be like way up here. So that's a bit of a liability for me. Um, it's gonna be really, really tough to leverage this on this particular rifle. I'm gonna have to bring this as far back as possible. I might need even an extension that goes further back. So that's gonna be tough. I can at least illuminate the reticle here, which that helps. And really at this point, I mean, I'm almost able to look straight through this, but it would be more like a one time than a five time uh, optical zoom for me. I mean, at that point, really the magnification, I mean, you know, <laughs> looking through it with both eyes open, I mean, I can do it and I can put that red dot right where I need and I'm really literally looking straight past the optic itself. I'm really only leveraging this for the dot on the chevron. So, I mean, would that work? Height-wise, this is perfect. Uh, Clarity-wise, the dot is perfect. I could definitely get that right on target and I feel like I'd be able to just smoke what I'm shooting at, but it's not really the intended purpose for this particular optic. So I'd need to make some adjustments on this rifle for sure. <laughs> to my final demonstration. This is the Holosun HE515, which this has been absolutely awesome. I love this optic. It's single one-time uh, magnification. Uh, just very simple, easy, easy to see. Hopefully this will work. And as I take a quick look, I feel like I need to mount this towards the back, which gives me a pretty good amount of meat to grab onto. And the nice thing about this is it is quick release which I can tell you already will need a little bit of an adjustment because that's quite tight. And now at this point with this mounted on the back, at least it has pretty good overall meat holding onto the actual rail itself and not too much in the way of overhang. So, so far, this might be my most viable option yet, which is still cool because this is an awesome little optic. And getting on the actual eye relief and the ability to see the optic sits right where I want. I can see literally perfect. The dot is clear. The hollow sun is beautiful. And this should work very, very well. I can't see my uh, iron sights, unfortunately. I missed just a little bit. But from a practical standpoint, so far, this is definitely the best overall option. So if this works, I'm happy about that. It's just a matter of whether or not the rounds will eject. So at this point, I mean, we've done the damage to try to figure this thing out. The only next thing I can do is get this to the range. So let's get out there and field test this. I'm excited to see how it goes. range and I have to admit I am both pleasantly surprised and confused at the same time and well you know I do have to say after the field use testing I'm impressed that not a single round failed to properly eject with each one of the optics no problem no impediments nothing getting in the way even with this primary arms slx which has really in my opinion sort of the most potential interference now uh 
pleasantly surprised? Yes, because I had no issues whatsoever. Confused? Well, I guess I'm just failing to understand why the rail isn't complete across the top. I mean, to me, if the actual mount is in the way and could be what's impeding the round from ejecting, but it's not, then the rail can't be the impeding factor. Does that make sense? So for me, I'm just confused. And, you know, could there be another rail I could put on there? And, and at that point, it gives me more adjustability with my optics. At that point, it gives me more stability with my optics because I'm mounting directly to that hard platform. There's not a gap or a void underneath where the rail actually is, you know, providing the support for the optics mount. So again, I mean, what good is this? I mean, it's plenty good. It does, you know, a, a good amount to help me out and get me moving in the right direction. It's also very limiting in terms of, you know, what it's allowing me to mount to this and where I'm being, you know, allowed to mount to it. And well, it's ejecting just fine. I don't know. This is confusing to me. So all in all, I mean, a good test that was only 50 rounds. So you did see 50 rounds of shooting today. No failures to eject. So far, this rifle's been fantastic. And I can tell you much, much more testing to come. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the factory 1911 Picatinny rail. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this content, do me a favor. Take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more on my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it. That's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.